tuning in. So we've had some technical difficulties the last uh, few times we've tried to record, so hopefully we've got it figured out and the screen won't turn sideways. Um, so, but let us know. If something comes up on the screen just um, and you're watching, just please let us know so we, we, uh, we can fix it. And, uh, and also let us know if you're, if you're tuned in. Let us know if you're watching. So um, it's just a way that we can all connect together this morning. And when we see each other's names and possibly we've all been in classes together, it's just a way that we can just acknowledge one another and say good morning right, without actually being together. Right? So, so this morning, um, we're going to be working with um, some spinal twist and some abdominal work in a way that um, focuses on the navel center, which we know to be the, the solar plexus region. Also in the chakra system, this is the monopleric chakra, this is the third chakra. And I just feel a call to work on this area right now. Um, you know, this particular region of the body is the, is the region of digestion. And we're having to digest so much right now, especially emotionally. And for those of us that have been home a lot, I have definitely taken on um, baking a little bit more than I normally do. So you can think of it as that way too. We're, we're at home, so um, maybe just we're, we're um, indulging a little bit more. Uh, so uh, we can look at it as a, as a physical thing as well. But with this region of the body, this is um, what we associate to our um, this is where we we gain a more depth or gain more depth in our own personal power, right? And so it's a way that we can pull in more confidence, we can pull in more vitality. Um, and so it's a way that we, we can think of it as seizing your personal power this morning. And uh, so we're gonna start with a nice comfortable seat. So please make sure you're, and also you're gonna, uh, if you have a block at home, great. If you don't have one, don't worry. Just take a, a blanket or a towel and roll it up nice and tight so it's got a good roll to it So, because we're going to be putting um, it between the, the knees in a little bit when we come into some spinal rotation. So please find a nice comfortable seat for yourself this morning, sitting up nice and tall and just take a moment to drop in. Okay, so I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes or a few seconds, if you will, to just arrive. So get comfortable if you don't have the towel or a block. Um, now is the perfect time to go grab one. And for those of us that feel like we have everything we need, go ahead and just close your eyes and drop in. Take a moment, feel the parts of the body connected to the floor right now, to the earth. So it's important to remember when we're working with the chakra system in, in any way, especially when we're, we're coming up the chakras, it's important to feel a very, uh, just a, a sense of being grounded. We're going to work with opening the hips a little bit too because opening the hips is a way that we find a little bit more freedom through the spine. So just taking a moment, bring your, or as you said, drop your awareness down into the pelvis, down into the legs. Feel free to close your eyes or have the eyes open, but have a steady gaze. Taking a few moments to breathe together, just to arrive. It's coming into this time that you've put aside for yourself. And little by little, breath by breath, you start to feel this nice elongating of the spine. So as the tailbone anchors down, literally vertebra by vertebra by vertebra, as you move up all the way into the atlas and axis as it inserts into the skull, just finding a nice length. And then let the backs of the hands rest on the inner knees or the thighs. Let the palms face up as a way of being very receptive just to the grace of your practice this morning. A way that we become open conduits to feeling the energy around us, even getting a sense of feeling as though we're just sitting with thousands of other people globally right now doing this practice. 
And maybe not this practice with me, but the practice of yoga, the practice of collectively, consciously coming together in a global way. take a, a few breaths here, very deliberate in a way that we just feel the rise and fall of breath moving in and out. So please exhale all of your breath out. Take a nice slow breath in. You can visualize that you're, you're filling up into a cup. So you fill up into the bottom, into the middle, and into the top. And as you exhale from the top to the middle to the bottom. This is a perfect time now to Set a temperature in your room or wherever you are that is suitable for you. Some of us like to practice in more of a warm room. Just making sure you're as comfortable as you can be. At the next inhalation, pull the hands together right at the center of the chest. And as we pull our palms together, it's a way that we just take a moment to set our own personal intention. And as we set this intention, infuse it again with a way of letting this practice just be a, a channel for you again, to tap into your own personal power to feel as though you have the capability to slow down and digest everything that's coming your way. And then bowing the forehead into the hands. Maybe there's an inner ohm. Just feeling that vibration. and release the hands and lift the gaze. Okay, so staying in your seat, feel free to cross the other leg in front if you like. And you see that I'm sitting on a blanket to have my hips a little elevated here. We're just gonna start with some spinal movements here. So have the hands anywhere that you can on your knees. So you can cup the knees if you like or just have the heels of the hands. And then we're gonna rotate. So whatever direction for you, you start is perfectly fine. Just making these nice spinal circles here. The light is starting to let the ribs get involved all the way up into the shoulders and the neck. But the one thing that I want you to be very mindful of here as you're moving in this circular way is that there's a toning of the pelvic floor that you start to engage, which we know is Mula Bandha, and also into the abdominal wall. So the navel starts to pull into the spine a little bit more. So as we're moving in this circular way, it's a way that we acknowledge the stabilizer muscles, which are very, very key and very important as we start to just twist and turn and move and put our body in these particular positions that we do in a yoga practice. And then let's go to the other side. So we're in the opposite direction. And just allow it to make sense in your body. So some of us are doing really big, big, big circles, and some of us are just moving just a little bit slower. I just wanna take a moment to thank Sonia Costello here. She is helping me with just making sure that the camera is where it needs to be or the phone is where it needs to be and that the screen is in the right direction. So a few more times. And start to link your breath as you inhale, and as you exhale, you start to Move forward, the inhale pulls the shoulders over the hips, exhaling. And then push 
push your way back up to center. And then take a moment in the seat. Feel the hips push down. And feel the outer hips as though they're drawing in to the midline. And you'll feel this lift coming up into the pelvic floor. So we want to maintain that lift and again into the abdominal wall, but we don't want to do it in a way where we feel very rigid or, or, or stuck, right? So um, just knowing when to tune into that, especially when we're going into more rotations. Okay, so I'm going to have you come down onto your spine now. So lying on your back, and if you don't have a block, don't worry. Just take your towel or your blanket and give it a nice fold like so, so it can go in between the knees so you have a point of reference to, to push into. And then coming down onto your back to make sure that the back of the skull is nice and flat, the shoulders feel like they're on the earth. Adjust your block or your blanket. Flex through your heels and squeeze the knees in towards one another. And just take a moment, push your low back down into the floor and feel how the abdominal wall becomes very activated here. And the shin bones are parallel to the floor. And then let the arms slide out. Palms can be up or down. Make any little adjustment, just pulling the shoulder blades in a little bit more towards your spine. And then as we exhale, we're gonna take the knees over to the right, but we're not gonna let the right knee touch the floor. And then as we inhale, we come back up. It's very important to keep squeezing the block or whatever you have between your knees. And then over to the left. Just start to find a rhythm here. This is a great opportunity to find that nice rhythm with your breath. As you exhale, the knees go into one direction. As you inhale, the knees back up to the sky. to turn and twist. Right? We have to have the, the power of the legs activated so that we stay safe. Just a few more times here. And let's start to bring the head into it. So as the knees go to the right, let your gaze turn to the left. As the knees come up, the nose comes up. As you exhale, knees to the left, nose to the right. As soon as you feel the opposing shoulder lifting, you know that you're at your edge. So try not to let the shoulder lift off of the floor. The sides of the waist are pushing down into the earth. And you might notice every time you go from side to side, you might be dropping into just a little bit more space. Two more times to each side. And then from here, release the strap, or excuse me, not the strap, but the whatever prop you have, put that off to the side and let your feet come down to the floor. Lift your hips up a little bit and draw your tail down. So it almost feels like you're trying to really lengthen your low back and push your low back down into the floor so we can come into a little bit of abdominal work. Your arms are gonna be down by your side, shoulder heads are pushing down, and then legs go straight up to the sky. Of course, if you need to, your knees can stay bent. Then as we exhale, we're gonna lower the right leg down, let the right leg hover. The inhale pulls the leg back up, and the exhale lowers the other leg down. So move slow so that you can acknowledge if your low back starts to lift up off of the floor. It just means that some other muscles are trying to come in and compensate. And so we don't want to allow that to happen. So I feel like your navel is drawing into your spine, sides of the waist pushing down to the floor. While you're really creating all of that stability, make sure you stay soft in your face, you stay soft through your neck and your jaw. Now you can stay here, and some of you might have your knees bent and you're going 
This may be tapping the floor because that feels better on your low back and that's fine too. The next step would be to take the hands behind the head, interlace the fingers, and then lift the chest slightly, lift the head slightly, and then continue to lift and lower. But you're moving so slow and mindful in a way, again, that you notice if your low back tries to pull up away from the floor. Not using your neck so your head feels very heavy in your hands if you have the fingers interlaced behind the head. And there's a chance that we're starting to feel a little warm by now. I just feel like we're waking up the abdominal wall. One more each side, right leg lowers, reach through both of your heels. Good, and then drop the head down, drop the feet down, take a moment and just observe. Take the right hand to the belly and let the left hand place its way on top. Just take a moment, feel the breath rise and fall in the hands. It's a way that you can even give yourself your own personal Reiki, your own just healing energy into this region of the body. This is also the, what we call the Agni, the digestive fire. And it's, again, it's not just about what we consume physically through our bodies, what we eat, right? But it's also the, just everything going on around us emotionally, what we have to digest as well and how we assimilate all of that, how we eliminate all of that. Good. And then squeeze the knees back into the chest, pull your forehead in towards your knees, make a little tight, tight ball as best as you can, and then rock your way up to a seat. Okay. So you can either sit in a cross-legged position here, or you're gonna come up and sit on your knees for a moment. Toes are pointed, or Actually, yeah, keep your toes pointed. Don't, don't, uh, don't sit on your, uh, uh, have your toes curled under at all. And sit up nice and tall. Feel your tail anchor down. Feel your low belly pull in. And then we're going to do three rounds of breath of fire. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this particular breath, don't worry about it. But just take a nice breath in. And as you exhale, it's a, a little bit of a force as you exhale out. Okay. So nice and tall through the spine. Feel the chin in a nice neutral position. Feel the back of the neck long. So we take an inhale, and then there's an ex, ex, ex. So I'm showing you from the side, so you can see every time I exhale, it feels like I'm drawing my navel in towards my spine. I'm staying pretty controlled through the chest, And you just find a pace that works for you. The inhale is very passive. And again, the exhale is forced. Let your next inhale reach your arms up overhead. Palms can touch. And then exhale, lower the arms down. Bring the hands again back to the thighs. Take a breath in. Exhale. If you get lightheaded at all, if you're on your cycle, this is a breath that you probably want to avoid. So you can just sit here and find a nice rhythm with your breath. We'll only be here for about another minute and a half. Next inhale again, arms reach all the way up. If the palms touch, great. Head drops back a little. Exhale, arms back down. One more round. Inhale, exhale. This 
very natural to start to feel maybe even a slight fatigue around the abdominal wall, even this hint, hint, hint of just maybe even nausea, right? And if you're coming to that, then just take a break. This breath can really stir some stuff up in the abdominal region. It's very nourishing for all the vital internal organs. Inhale, arms reach up, look up, palms touch. And then this time as you exhale, pull the hands down right to the center of the chest, right back at the heart. Just coming back into or taking this time to set a personal intention for your practice this morning. And then release the hands down. Find your way coming onto all fours. Place your hands in a way that just really feels like it represents just your showing up this morning, your dedication to being here. Walk your left knee in just a little bit so it's right underneath your left hip and extend your right leg back behind you. Try to squeeze the leg to straight and feel the right kneecap pointing straight down. As you inhale, lift the skull, lift your right heel, look up. As you exhale, squeeze your knee in towards your chest or your nose. Inhale, kick the leg back, reach to the heel, look up. Exhale, round. So you're welcome to add your left arm to this if you like. As you exhale, elbow to knee, knee to elbow. Or just keep your left hand down. And keep the movement through the spine, through the leg. Drop the right knee and the left hand as you have that lifted. Do some circles through the hips here. Nice way to start to warm up into the wrist, even into the shoulders. And then come back. Right knee right under the right hip. Extend your left leg back. Try to squeeze the leg to straight. Left kneecap pointing straight down. As you inhale, lift your heel. Lift your head. Look up. As you exhale, round. Try to keep the inner left thigh, inner left knee lifting towards the sky as you extend your leg back. And again, if you want to include the right arm, Pulling elbow to knee, knee to elbow. Just don't let that take the focus away from the navel center. A couple more times. And right hand drops down, left knee drops down. Go ahead, walk the knees back just a little bit. Curl the toes under, lift your hips up and back through your downward facing dog. When you get here, take a little bit of time to adjust your hands, adjust your feet, so you feel very, feel very grounded in this pose. So the knees might need to bend quite a bit. Start to pedal through the legs. And then please look forward. Start to walk your way to the top of your mat. If you like to have your feet together, that's fine. I personally like to have my feet about a fist distance apart. 
where my sits bones line up to my heel bones. I just feel a lot more stable there. So find what works for you. Take a nice inhale, slide the hands up the legs, stretch through the spine, and as you exhale, fold your way down. Inhaling again. Feel the strength through the legs, all the way up into the pelvic floor. Keep that toning through the abdominal wall. Bend the knees as much as you need to. And two more times, inhaling, stretch the spine, feel the heart pull forward, folding back in. Good. And then we're going to keep the hips low this time, and then reach the arms coming into Utkatasana. So I want you to imagine that you have that blanket or the block between your inner knees like you did just a moment ago. Okay. So as you lower your hips down into Utkatasana, there's a squeezing in to the midline. So it's like there's a magnet on the inner legs, but without knocking your knees together. So it's more of an isometric action. You can have your arms down here if you like. It's a great way that we turn on the stabilizers through the hips all the way up through the low back. You might start to feel a little heat generating in the body. And then push through your feet, reach to the sky, arc back, and then exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Stand tall, stand strong. Feel your self-worth. Stand in it. Be with it. Release the arms. Inhale, look up. As you exhale, fold your way forward. Let your inhale stretch your spine. And as you exhale, please step back to high plank. Take a moment here. I always like to rock my hips a little side to side just to feel the pose. If you need to come to the knees anytime, don't wait for me to offer that to you. Just know that it's always there for you, just like child's pose. Squeeze your legs. Try to round your spine a little bit here like you're coming into cat pose a little bit. And then pull your hips back, downward facing dog. Please take three breaths here. And then the next inhalation, you're going to come forward into your plank. And then come to the knees if you like, or lower your way down through Chaturanga. Take your arms out to the sides. Pull your shoulders down your back a little, pull your legs in a little closer. And as you inhale, take flight. Lift your legs, lift your arms, your chest, your head. Feel the inner legs lifting more than your outer legs. This is a way that we start to really ignite the deep, deep muscles along the spine that need to be activated to assist in spinal rotation. And release hands, lift up into a cobra, and exhale, pull your hips back, downward facing dog. Please take an inhale, lift your right leg up to the sky. And as you exhale, pull your knee in towards your chest. Inhale, kick the leg back. As you exhale, right knee to right elbow. Kick the leg back up. As you exhale this time, you're gonna see if the right knee will come anywhere near your left arm. And kick the leg back up. Drop the foot down. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee in, back 
backed up. Left knee, left elbow. As you exhale, left knee to the right elbow. And the left foot back down. And then from here, you're gonna walk your feet just a little bit closer in towards your hands. There's a possibility that your heels might come down. And of course, bend the knees if you need to and let the heels lift. You're gonna take your left hand and find the outside of your right leg. So the heel, the shin, the thigh, and then pull the hips back over to the left and then pull on your right leg and look under your right arm. Release, left hand down, right hand to outside of left foot, pull the hips over to the right. Take a full breath in as you exhale, pull, and turn and twist under your left arm. And come back to center. Walk your dog back out to whatever's comfortable for you. Inhale, right leg reaches up to sky. As you exhale, pull your right knee into the chest and step your right foot lightly forward. Drop your back knee down. Float your arms up. Anjane Asana. Push down into your front foot, back into your back ankle. Feel lift and length through the spine. And then pull the hands to the heart. Take the left elbow across the right thigh. So even if you're tempted right now to lift up off your back knee, try to resist that. Keep the back knee down. You can even have your gaze down. You can have your gaze to your hands or slight to slowly start to look up. Unwind. Lift the back knee. And step your right foot back to meet your left. Inhale, left leg up. Squeeze the knee in. Step the left foot through. Right knee down. Your inhalation reaches the arms. Take a moment here. Just feel this shape in your body. Hands come to heart. Rotate right elbow, left thigh. Without lifting the back knee. Sometimes in the practice, we can just try to apply too much, do too much, and then we don't have the opportunity to really digest and assimilate what we're doing. And both hands down to the left foot, back knee lifts, step back, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, come forward to your plank. If you like, come to the knees or lower all the way down. Point the toes. Strong legs, rise up, look up, and pull the hips back, either child's pose or downward facing dog. Look forward, and however you want to get there, you can hop, step, float. As you inhale, stretch your spine, fold your way down, drop your hips again for Utkatasana. Feel like you're even just pushing down into the center of your heels, the mound of your big toes, even though the heels are going to be a little heavier here. Drop a little lower. Pull the hands to heart. Take the left elbow to the right thigh. Pull your left knee back so your knees are in alignment. Gaze is down. Or slowly start to turn to the right with your head. Feel even weight in your heels. And slowly release. Reach the arms back up overhead, Utkatasana. 
As you exhale, right elbow to left thigh. Push palms together. Find length through the spine and slowly rotate. Not too much, too quick. moment again just to pause to feel to breathe in our world right now we have systems that are breaking down that need to be broken down and with fresh new ideas new opportunities coming into that so as the spring is upon us Maybe we can think of as we're moving through this practice and tapping into our own personal power, how we can be a part of that positive shift in the world, that positive change in the world. Inhale, reach the arms up. Now as you exhale, you're gonna, oh, it's important to keep your hip points forward. And then you're going to let your right arm rotate back behind you, left arm in front of you. And turn your chest, turn your belly. Keep your left hip pulling back. Inhale, back up. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Pull the right hip back. Inhale, back up. And then continue in that way. You can even look over to the right hand. But your work is trying to keep the hips forward, not letting the hips rotate. It's a reminder that we're not, when we twist and turn, we don't really want to move from the pelvis. We want to move from the waistline up the spine. And if we're actually really paying attention to that and doing the right way, it feels really hard. <laughs> One more time to the left. Arms back up. And as you fold forward this time, let your hands catch behind you. Use whatever you have at home if your fingers don't interlace. Drop your head, drop your chest, lift your hips, and reach your knuckles to the sky. Let your head hang for a moment. And I feel as though I'm, it's my responsibility, I'm here to continually remind you of 
particular alignment cues to keep us all safe, less prone to injury. So keep the inner legs pulling in isometrically, tailbone anchoring down, pelvic floor, belly active. Neck soft, jaw soft, eyes soft. Release the hands down to the low back and then all the way down to earth. Please have your left leg back, straighten your right leg for a moment for Parjvottanasana. So if your hands don't come easily to the floor, well, you can always walk them up to your shin. You can be on fingertips, or if you have a piece of furniture in front of you, feel free to use your resources. Knowing your resources is part of that tapping into that personal power. So the mound of the big toe rooting down, and then there's a spiral action that comes up the leg that pulls the right hip back and anchors the tail down. Step the left foot forward, and the right leg back. Find a stride that works for you. Make sure the back heel is grounded, and you're a little wider than heel to heel. Find that same spiral action, the mound of the big left toe pushes down, spirals up the leg, pulls the left outer hip back, and down. It's very common for one set of hamstrings to be a little tighter, a little bit more stubborn than the other. And of course, if the front knee needs to bend. And please step right foot forward. Reach to the spine. Step back to down dog. From downward facing dog, you're gonna lift your right leg up to the sky. Go ahead and bend your right knee. And then take a moment before you open your hip, I want you to really pay attention to the left hip. So squeeze your left hip. So it's almost like you're squeezing your left glute. And then slowly from your thigh bone, start to open your right leg or your right hip open to the sky. You could look under your right arm or turn your gaze to look under your left. Keep your belly pulling in, the ribs pulling in, so you don't just compress through the mid back. And then bring the knee forward. Step the right foot through, spinning your back heel. Coming up into Virabhadrasana 2. Take it right into reverse, warrior. Left hand down, right arm overhead. Inhale, come back up. Drop right forearm to right thigh, left arm overhead. Look down, both hands down to the right foot. Spin back heel to sky. Walk your feet a little wider apart, side to side. Right knee right over the right ankle. Maybe narrow your stride a little bit. Inhale, come up into high lunge. Breathe. Feel the strength through the legs. And then, we did this a moment ago standing. Turn the right arm, to take the right arm behind you, left arm in front of you. Keep the right hip pulling in. And then drop your left elbow now to your right thigh and bring the right hand to join. Of course, please come back down to the knee if this feels too challenging for you this morning. Left inner knee and inner thigh reaching to sky. Outer right hip squeezing in. Inner right thigh lengthening. Both hands down to the right foot. Step back to down dog. You can stay down dog, take a child's pose, or come forward to a plank if you like. Lowering your way down. Lift 
lifting the heart, pulling the hips back. Inhale, please lift left leg to sky. Bend the knee. And then find that toning in the right hip joint all the way through the right leg. And then let the left thigh open up the left hip. So the right knee is going to want to turn probably in. So keep your right knee pointing to your right wrist. And slowly pull the left knee in. Step the left foot through. Spin the right heel down. Coming up. Warrior two. Right hand down the back leg. Keep length as you come out. Left forearm to left thigh. Right arm reaches overhead. Look down, both hands come down to frame the left foot. Right heel spins up to the sky. Find a stride that works for you. Inhale, coming up. Crescent lunge. Left arm behind, right arm in front. Right elbow finds left thigh. Left hand to right hand. Applying the same alignment cues to the side. Both hands down to the left foot. Step back. Your choice. Wherever you go, you're going to take five breaths. So if you're in child's pose, five breaths. Down dog, five breaths. Or use those breaths to move your little flow. And then we're going to walk or hop or float our feet to the top of the mat. Bend the knees quite a bit. Let your arms wrap around the backs of your legs, even if it just means that the hands find the backs of the shins or the backs of the calves. And give yourself a nice big squeeze. Forward folds are very complimentary to spinal twist. And then release the hands. You can either roll up or come up with a nice flat back all the way back up to standing. Find your way back into a Tadasana. So standing nice and steady on your feet. Bring the hands back to heart. Let the thumbs rest gently at the chest. Eyes open or closed. Whatever allows you to really internalize the practice. Feel your heart beating. And then release the hands. We're going to come to a balance. Okay, so you're going to stand as steady as you can on your left foot and then pull your right knee up. So I'll show you from the side, one thing that has a tendency, that we have a tendency to do, is when we hold the leg, we'll just kind of lean back, right? So I want you to think about the femur bone inserting more into the socket. So you pull the head of the femur bone back a little, and that's gonna allow you more access to find strength through the pelvic floor and even into the abdominal wall. Let's just see how our balance is this morning. Drop your right foot down. And take a hold of the left leg. You can hold behind the thigh, the front of the knee. But find that insertion of the femur bone into the joint. The right leg is in Tadasana. 
and drop the left foot back down. Take the right leg, bring it back up. Okay, so from here, some of you will take your left hand to the outside of your right knee and open up like so. Okay, keeping the right hip down, so don't let the right hip hike up. So drop the right hip down. Now if you want a little bit more challenge this morning, you can take your left hand and hold the outside of your right foot and then slowly start to extend your right leg out. It might not go to straight, especially if your right hip hikes up. <laughs> So keep the right hip down, reach through the inner arch, and take your right arm back. The outsides of the mouth of the ears make the pose much more uh, pleasurable. One more breath. And come back to center, release your right foot. Full breath in. And complete the breath out. Coming to the second side. So you can take the right hand to the outside of the left knee. Open the left arm up. Or just take your time. Take the left foot. Any degree of straight. Maybe there's a big bend in your left knee. And slowly open up. gentle rock back and forth. Notice the conversation that you're having with yourself right now. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale and bow. Inhale, stretch your spine. Step back, high plank. Lower down. Inhale, coming up. And hips pull back, child's pose. If you're at home and you want it to be downward facing dog, let it be down dog. This region of the body, this is also the seat of what we call Samana Vayu. Vayu translates to wind. So there's a particular wind moving in a circular way right in the solar plexus region. And this Samana Vayu is a way that we can think of with this motion, this movement of a way that aids and assists in this digestion, this assimilation that comes through digestion. So maybe you can get a sense of that with your breath, just feeling this movement, this motion. Remember earlier I said it's the seat of Agni, that digestive fire. So what feeds fire? Right? Air. Come to standing on your knees. You can take your folded blanket, towel, or your block, and you're going to bring it up into the inner thighs. The toes are going to stay curled under. And the action of the inner thighs squeezing in, again, turns on certain stabilizers. So from all the twisting, right, we'll find a nice back bend here. So the hands come to the low back as a reminder to keep length in your low back. The lift is coming from the chest, from the sternum, from the upper ribs, curling open. And then from here, if you just drop back just a little bit, keeping the hands on the low back. 
And as you feel that energetic lift through the pelvic floor all the way up to the heart, maybe you can take one hand and the other hand to the heels. It's okay if the pelvis comes forward a little. Just be mindful of how much compression you're feeling in your low back as your hips push forward. Head can drop back. And slowly, leading with your heart, come up. Find your way to all fours. Just keep the blanket, towel, or block there. And as you keep the block there, move through some cat cows. Probably after that, cat's going to feel very good, hopefully. And now we're going to take one more. So coming back up, and of course, everything is optional, okay? Now, if you have a little bit more range of motion through your spine, a little bit more bendy, a little bit more flexible, feel free to point your toes. I just feel like I get a lot more out of this pose with my toes curled under. Hands to low back, squeeze inner legs, feel that refer to pelvis or pelvic floor, up into abdominal wall. Feel the lift come to the heart. Palms forward. Maybe you stay right here. Or you trust. And drop back. Hands find heels. Knees push down. Shins push down. Ankles push down. Heart lifts. And slowly come back. Hands back down to earth, wrist under shoulders, knees under hips, and don't cat-cow, don't cat-cow. Just pull your navel in without rounding your spine. The breath will be a little bit more restricted in this region, it will come more up into the chest because of how much you're pulling your low belly in. And then release whatever you have between your knees here, your thighs. And please find your way coming to a seat. So we're going to complement all that with some forward folding, but just one forward fold. So I'm going to take this blanket, place it up underneath. Okay, so I have a little bit of elevation. This helps with the anterior tilt of the pelvis and allows me to do my best to maintain a curve in my low spine. You're going to pull your right foot to the inside of your left leg. And then let's take it, I'm going to take it a little bit wider today. So we're going to take the right knee out to the right a little bit more. So it might mean that you have to angle your blanket just a little bit more at a diagonal. And then you're going to take the left leg and walk it out. So legs are very firm. Right thigh pushing down. Okay. Left hip pushing down. And then we're going to turn over to the left leg. So there's a lot going on in this pose. So it's a little bit more intermediate. So if you're newer to the practice, I want you to keep your hips more square. And you're going to fold over your right leg in this way. Okay, for those of us that are a little bit more advanced in the practice, we're opening up here, okay? And then as we turn the navel and the chest towards the left leg, we're going to reach the right hand down and possibly hold to the left foot. If you can't hold the left foot, don't worry about it. Just walk your right hand forward towards your left heel. The left hand is pushing down to keep length through your left side and to keep you even through your hips or sits bones, I should say. Inhale, stretch the spine. And as you exhale, fold forward to any degree. Don't go too far too fast. You could also have a nice bend in your left knee like so and fold. See if you can 
drop your right rib cage just a little bit more, your right armpit just a little bit more. And then we're going to inhale, reach the right arm up, keep that length through the whole right side of the torso, all the way up through the chest. And then drop your right arm back a good distance behind your right hip. Swing your left arm out and then just push to lift your hips and arc back a little here. And drop the right hip back down. Your right foot now if your blanket is a little crooked or diagonal you're going to bring your right foot now over your left leg feel free to pull your left heel to your right hip if you like again right hip down not hiked up towards the chest okay take a moment here feel weight through the pelvis length through the spine and then slowly turning to your right Simply letting the forearm hug the knee or the left elbow to the thigh. You could even bring the first finger and thumb together here on the left hand as a way that this mudra reminded of how it promotes clarity, connection. Little by little, turning more and more. Keep the right hip forward. Slowly release, abdominal wall, toned. Drop the right knee now over your left knee if possible. Okay, coming into like a cow face or to a gomukhasana. If you need to, you just cross your legs like so. Okay, sometimes you have to pick your hips up, right? And then replant your seat back down. Make sure both sit bones are grounded. Take a nice inhale here. And just be honest, you might not need to fold forward at all, but if you feel like you've got the space to do so, just start to bring your heart forward towards the inseam of your right knee. And bow in. Relax your hip creases. And definitely up into the jaw. back, uncross the legs, and take both legs out for a moment, just shake them out, lean back onto the hands a little, and then we're going to pull the left foot in, okay, so you determine at home what you need to do, if you want your right leg to be straight, Maybe this is as far as you go. You just grab the toes and you feel a nice stretch to the back of your right leg. Or we open the left knee out, open the right leg a little bit. Good, and then we turn and rotate the belly and the chest towards the right leg. Really strong right leg, right kneecap doesn't move. And then left hand slides towards the right foot, maybe catching the toes or to the outside of the shin. Right hand is pushing down to keep right side body long. And just finding your way, coming forward, whatever the body is giving you permission. Not your ego, but your body. heavy. The breath fluid. When we come to these seated poses, it's so important to maintain the 
called it floor action and the belly action, which we know as Mula Bandha and Uddhyana Bandha. Now slowly keep reaching through the left arm, big stretch all the way up. And then the left hand's going to find space behind the left hip and then push down. Maybe walk the right foot in a little to really open up here. And drop the left hip back down. And then we find a twist. So now the left foot crosses over straight right leg or right heel pulls into outer left hip. Root down, lengthen, and turn. If your shoulders are way up here, you're just over efforting. So relax the shoulders down the back. Don't use your shoulder strength so much. Use your transverse abdominus. Use these abdominal wall muscles to turn and twist. I like to actually push down through the left heel to encourage more stabilization. Strong belly, unwind. Taking Gomukhasana now, or not full Gomukhasana because we're not doing the arm variation, but just more of a hip opener. So if you need to come forward a little, move around, make sure your left sit bone is down. So that might mean that you're here, okay? Any of us that have knee issues, Flexing through the heels. Feel weight of the pelvis, weight of the hips. And just take a moment here. You may not need to fold forward at all. Or slowly start to find your way. Three more breath here. Walk the hands back towards the knees. Back up. Lean back into the hands. Unwind the legs, shake them out a little bit. And then we're gonna scoot the hips forward so we're at the middle of the mat. And then find our way coming down onto our backs. Take the feet as wide as your sticky mat. Take your arms out to the sides. Push your head down so you can Lift your upper back a little bit to pull your shoulder blades down and in. And then wherever direction you go, just start to do some windshield wipers here. You can start to do as we did in the beginning as the knees drop to the right, the head goes left. As knees go left, head goes right. Let the inner knees 
drop in towards one another. They might not touch, and that's fine. It's just a nice way that we open up into the lower back and release any tension through the psoas, which we used a lot today in our spinal rotation, just through the whole practice. Placing the right hand back again, the left hand on top of the belly, right at the solar plexus. Feel this warm sensation through this region of your body, visualizing this inner fire, burning away fears and doubts. Acknowledging that this is a time to tap in to that personal power. And finding that courage within. Just taking this time to feel as though we can manifest what we want to be, what we want to see in the world. We all have a little bit more time to pause right now. So we use these pauses wisely. And then from here, if you wish to come into an inversion, you're welcome to come into an inversion. You could take the block, you could even have the blanket just so it's a very mild inversion and bring it up underneath the pelvis if you like and take your legs to the sky for a little waterfall pose. If you want to come into, take your mat to a wall and come into a headstand or a shoulder stand. supported bridge pose, if that feels better for you. And as you start to make your way down from wherever you are and finding your way back onto your back, just taking the outer edges of your feet for a moment into a baby pose. slowly from here you'll take your blanket or whatever you're on if you're on anything move it out of the way and find your way coming into Shavasana so maybe that blanket now comes under your knees so you have some support under your knees for your low back take your arms as wide as you like take your feet as wide as you like take a full body breath in Find that pause, and a nice slow exhale out. Feel every muscle, every bone, every joint of your body relax. While the subtle body, that vayu that's constantly in motion in the subtle body, processing, Adjusting. Feel Gaia hold you.
slowly, start to let your head rock side to side. Reaching the arms overhead. And pointing and flexing through the feet, big circles through your wrists. And either one knee or both knees in at a time. Finding yourself making that tight ball again. And then either roll into your right side or rocking up to a seat. And finding a prop if you need it to sit on. Let your eyes close for a moment here. Sitting up nice and tall, back of the neck long, all the way to the back of the skull. Just feel the gratitude coming from your body for taking this time. Feel the gratitude coming from me for taking this time to tune in, to receive what I have to offer, what I have to share. Drop your attention back into the navel center. It's almost like doing a little belly breathing right now as you inhale, you'll feel the belly swell a little. And as you exhale, you'll feel the belly pull back to the back body. back to heart. Thank you so much for tuning in to Astral Community Yoga this morning. We love and miss you. We can't wait to see you. And may love and light guide our way today and every day. Namaste.